Good Friday because what Jesus offered on the cross was eternally good for us. It's a very good day to remember that salvation was purchased for us when we couldn't save ourselves. God remedied the situation, stepping in, offering Jesus. Jesus fulfilled 425 scriptures as found in the Old Covenant, the Old Testament. That's a lot of scriptures, 425. And in fact, 28 were fulfilled on the day of his crucifixion. Did you know that? 28. As we think about Jesus' death on the cross, we look at the extreme humiliation he went through, the unfairness of it, the pain and the torture, and yet we have to step back and consider what the Bible says. Did you notice how many times John in his passion narrative said, in order that the scripture might be fulfilled? This suggests that God had an eternal plan from before the foundation of the world to save us. And ultimately he did it by sending his son, born in human flesh. Though he was equal with God, he did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but instead he emptied himself, taking the form of a servant. calling us to do the same. Not only was Jesus suffering, he was creating, because he is the creator of God in human flesh. Did you notice when Jesus was arrested, he said, I am he. And what happened? They fell back. Because he was and is and evermore shall be the great I am, the one who revealed himself as a name, I am. Of course they fell back. He was no ordinary man. Veiled in flesh, but full of majesty. Yet a majesty that was hardly recognizable. He had no attraction that we might be drawn to him. It says in one of those prophecies from Isaiah about the suffering servant. Yet we're drawn to him, aren't we? That's why we're here tonight. Because he's creating. He's creating a family right now with us just as he did from the cross. Let's step back for a moment and see what happened. Jesus was charged with blasphemy. He was unfairly tried, accused. This figure, Barabbas, was let go. Jesus was put in his place. Barabbas represents all of us. Jesus was beaten, spit upon, mocked, Scourge. Do you know what scourging was all about? You see, the Romans had perfected torture. Scourging was where a rod with leather straps containing jagged animal bone or metal would be taken across the victim's back many times. And if that didn't kill the victim, crucifixion certainly would. By his stripes we are healed, the scripture says. He fulfilled it. He carried that 200-pound cross through the streets of Jerusalem for you and for me. He died a criminal's death. He died our death. As the book of Hebrews says, he tasted death for us. So that we might not die forever. It's important to reflect upon the agony of the cross. Not because we have some kind of morbid sense of curiosity, but because it's important... It was documented, and it is the heart of the ministry of the suffering servant, so that whatever you go through, whatever amount of pain you may feel, Jesus has felt that and more, more than we could ever imagine. For us. So he took that cross, and with the help of Simon of Cyrene, ended up at Golgotha, where he was crucified between two criminals. And what did he do from the cross? He showed mercy consistently. He said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do to his torturers. He said to the thief who repented, This day you will be with me in paradise. And to his own mother he said, Mother, behold thy son, looking at the beloved disciple. And to the beloved disciple he said, Son, behold thy mother. He was creating a new family, just as he's doing with us tonight. And each time we gather together in his name, as people of the Spirit, people who are drawn by God's elected hand into the church. The church is a place of creation. It's where God is making this new family 
where he's making the whole world new, where he's taking things that have been brought down and low and he's raising them up, starting with each and every one of us. Crucifixion was not invented at the time of Psalm 22. That was composed a thousand years before Jesus uttered that from the cross. Three of those 425 fulfilled scriptures were uttered in that psalm from the cross. They pierced my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. They cast lots for my garments. You see, 600 years after that psalm was composed, the Romans finally invented this thing we call crucifixion. That was prophetic. The point I'm trying to make is that if our lives at times seem random, troubled, even filled with pain, though they may be, God is working all things for good according to a marvelous, divine, sovereign plan. It would be humanly impossible essentially to get a person to fulfill 425 scriptures apart from divine intervention. You're part of the plan. You're part of the family that's continually being created. And one of the things I love about Holy Week is that, unlike the normal time of the year when we get together usually Sunday to Sunday or maybe on a Wednesday in between, Holy Week just delivers service after service after service. And what's so joyful about that for me personally is I get to keep interfacing with my family. The faces change a little bit based on who's coming to the service, but we keep running into each other like we did in the vestry room, and we said, oh, hello again. I saw you at noon. This is like heaven in a way, continually worshiping the Lamb of God. This is a foretaste of that, this night. So take heart. Jesus died for your sins. He became sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. That's the good news. That's why it's good Friday. And so as this service continues, know that you're part of this family that's in the midst of being created. And you're being made new. And it's all because of one person, Jesus Christ, and that one full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice he offered on that old rugged cross. Let us pray. Lord, we admit our need of you. We admit that apart from you, we can do nothing. And yet we see that we are given strength, renewal, and blessing. And as we pass through your cross, through your merits, and through your mercy, into a new life. 